In this video, we're going to discuss entropy. Entropy is a measure of how spread out or how dispersed the system's energy is. What energy are we talking about right now? The energy we are talking about is the thermal energy, or heat, that is Q from previous videos or lectures. What is this energy getting spread out over? This energy is getting spread out or partitioned into translational motion of the molecule, rotational motion of the molecule, or vibrational motion of the molecule. So entropy is actually a measure of how thermal energy is being put into translational motion, rotational motion, or vibrational motion of molecules. Let's look at more details of the translational, rotational, and vibrational entropy. Let's look at translational entropy. First of all, translational energy is the, mo is the energy due to the motion of molecules and atoms in three-dimensional space. So that means the molecules are actually translating or moving in X, Y, and Z. Here are two different scenarios. We have a container with three gas molecules in it. The gas molecules are the little blue dots, and the red arrows represent their kind of vectors or their motion. So they're translating in three-dimensional space. Which scenario, either the left side or the right side, has a higher entropy? Remember, our definition of entropy is a measure of how spread out or dispersed the system's energy is. The energy we're talking about is translational energy. In which case is that translational energy dispersed or spread out more? On the right-hand side, the larger container means that the translational motion is spread out over more uh, space. Therefore, it is a higher dispersion of energy and a higher entropy. That means that the right-hand side has a large entropy value and the left-hand side has a small entropy value. Let's look at the translational entropy for a solid. Remember, translational energy is the motion of molecules. In a solid, the particles, the atoms or molecules, are locked into position, so they cannot translate. So there's no translational energy to be dispersed or spread out in the system. Therefore, the entropy is very low. Compare that to the liquid state. Here, in the liquid state of the same molecules, the molecules can move in three-dimensional space. They can translate relative to each other. So we see that the solid has a low or a small entropy compared to the liquid state, which has a larger entropy. Now let's compare the translational entropy of a liquid versus a gas sample. For a liquid, the molecules can move translationally relative to each other, but the amount of volume or space available to them is, is restricted, so the translational energy is spread over uh, a smaller space. The gas, on the end, other hand, is free to move and fill the volume of the container, so that translational entropy is spread out over more um, space. Therefore, the gas sample has a larger entropy. The general trend is that the entropy of the gas is highest, followed by the liquid, followed by the solid, which would have the lowest entropy for any given material. Next, let's look at rotational entropy. This is the entropy due to rotational motion. How is rotational motion spread out in space? Well, three-dimensional objects can spin in the xy plane or the zx plane or the zy plane in three-dimensional space. So let's look at diatomic fluorine versus ozone and figure out which of those molecules has more ways that it can spin in three-dimensional space. First let's look at fluorine. These two blue spheres connected by a line represent the two fluorine atoms connected by a covalent bond. This molecule is oriented along the y-axis. Therefore, it could rotate along the x-axis, and it's rotating in the zy plane. This molecule could also 
rotate along the z-axis, rotating in the xy plane. Rotation of this molecule along the y plane has no net uh, angular momentum because we're going to approximate the fluorine atoms as point masses. So rotation along the y-axis or rotation in the zx plane is not a mode where we could partition rotational energy into. So it turns out diatomic fluorine only has two ways it could rotate in three-dimensional space. Next, let's look at ozone. Before we do this, we need to draw the Lewis dot structure for ozone, which is here. And we notice that it has a bent molecular geometry. Let's look at how this bent molecular geometry could rotate in three-dimensional space. It could rotate along the z-axis. It could also rotate along the y-axis. And it could rotate along the x-axis. That means there are three possible rotational modes available to ozone. Fluorine has two rotational modes where energy can be partitioned. Ozone has three rotational modes where energy can parti be partitioned. Entropy is a measure of how spread out or dispersed energy is. Ozone has more ways the rotational energy can be spread out. Therefore, it has a higher rotational entropy than diatomic fluorine. In general, the more complex the molecule, the higher the rotational entropy components would be. Let's use diatomic fluorine and ozone to look at the vibrational entropy. To figure out the vibrational entropy, we need to find out how many different ways uh, fluorine can vibrate and how many different ways ozone can vibrate. When we look at the structure of fluorine, these two atoms held with a covalent bond, there's only one possible way they can vibrate. They can only vibrate away from each other and back again. That's one vibrational mode. In contrast, ozone has three vibrational modes. There's a vibrational mode where the two non-central oxygen atoms push away from the central atom at the same time and then back again. There's a vibrational mode where one of the oxygen atoms pushes away from the central while the other goes in and then back and forth, an oscillating back and forth motion. The third mode is a scissoring mode where the bond angle between the two non-central oxygen atoms changes. Here again we see that ozone has three vibrational modes whereas fluorine has one vibrational mode. Entropy is a measure of how Thermal energy is dispersed within the system. Ozone has three different ways the energy can be dispersed vibrationally. Therefore, it has a higher vibrational entropy than fluorine. Again, the more complex the molecular structure, the higher the vibrational entropy. Based on our understanding of how translational, rotational, and vibrational modes or microstates contribute to the overall entropy of molecules, let's write some kind of summary statements about standard entropy. First of all, for a given substance, the standard entropy is greater in the gas phase than in the liquid phase. This is because there are so many more translational modes available to the molecule in the gas phase. A second observation is that for two substances in the same phase and with similar molecular masses, the substance with the more complex molecular structure has the greater standard entropy. We've observed that already when comparing ozone and fluorine. We observed that for both vibrational and rotational entropy, ozone has a higher entropy value and we could say it has a more complex molecular structure.